What's going on, y'all? Let's talk two-stroke oil. I've about had it. When you go to the dealership, and I won't even have to say who does this, but we're getting ready to get into it, and I'm going to call a spade a spade. So, hey, we'll double your warranty if you'll buy this oil. This oil sucks. Anybody that works on two strokes has seen this from clogged filters. Now, look, this is an M-Tronic. Okay, there's that. There's your solenoid. This is a low hour saw. This is a firewood cutter. Technically, he's an ice cutter, but he does some carving. Not necessarily with this chainsaw, but it, look at this shit. All right, here's what he's got. Got pond water colored mix oil. And at 50 to one, that's all I've ever run. I mix exactly. That crankcase is dry as a popcorn fart. There's hardly any sheen on this. And let's rotate the crank around. Here, let me do it this way. Be careful not to clank anything. Uh, see a little bit of discoloration on the inside. Not too much, but, you know, and, you know, just the saw runs fine. Get your carbon build up on top. That's normal. Very few oils will be super clean on top. Um, what was the other thing I want to show you? Ah, here's a cylinder. Look, look at this, man. You got plenty of carbon build up. Let me see if I can get my light just so. Plenty of caked up carbon in there. Steel oil. Look, if you're going to run steel oil, you always see me in my videos. I got a steel hat on. I'm a steel guy. But I'm not that steel guy that's so brand loyal it's not even funny. Look, I work on everything. There's a mix of husky and steel. And, you know, every once in a while something like that shows up at the shop. Here's my personal collection of saws over here. It's a 288, a red light 66, 084, 056, a couple of solos, a couple of big huskies, a 285, a 2100. Look, man, I like everything. I got a Dolmar over there in pieces. One of these days I'll put together. So what I'm gonna do, if you wanna bear with me for a minute, this is my personal ugly baddie. This is my 046 I put together with all those first year, first two year hot rod parts. So I've done some partial disassembly. I promise you, this thing hasn't run since the last time I cut with it. We're gonna pop this cylinder off. We're gonna take a look at my piston. This cylinder is used, but it's factory. Um, when I put this together, this was a, a fun build for me out of you know some ugly parts jb welded handle you know the top handle's got a little bit of a bend to it ugly plastics but it has new bearings new seals new gaskets and a new oem piston and like i said it's probably got five seven tanks on it so it's got some runtime on it i mean not that much but what i want to talk about is how dry at 50 to 1 that is there's no film strength in this oil um the other thing i looked up some of the sds sheets so there's a bunch of chemists speak for what's the full synthetic of steel ultra but it's got a very high flash point i run boat oil and i know you guys are gonna rag me for this but if it's good enough for tree monkey the dude is the godfather of chainsaw hot rodding um, steel was a steel dealer. I mean, his personal saw, he's got a video up. Um, and this stuff's amazing. Burns clean. I got a buddy that I've turned on to. He runs it in his dirt bike. Doesn't even have to clean his power valve. Everything's nice and shiny. You run whatever you want. Just don't run the pond water colored oil. Um, the old school steel HP. I've seen a guy 
with an original O36 that he's had, it, you know, saw it been used commercially, look like hell. Million miles on it, and I could still see the machining rings in it. This is an old school dyno mineral oil. He ran his 40 to one, and I'm telling you, the piston looked like brand hammer new. No carbon buildup to speak of on anything important, you know, some of the muffler. You know, but just let's look at some of these flash points. So the Schaefer's at 104 centigrade. We're doing Fahrenheit. We're seeing how we're English speaking in America. Um, so 428 degree flash point for Ultra, 219 for the Schaefer 7000. They do make, this just hasn't gone through the extra certification. And I know it's made for boat oil, boat oil but look, man, this stuff's amazing. Um, got a high flash point with steel, oh, with the regular HP in the orange bottle, but this is still a mineral based dinosaur oil. It burns a lot better. Um, Amsoil Sabre is an ester based oil, uh, 356 Dominator, very low flash point. That's why it burns so clean. Looked at the two Husky oils and I, you know, a lot of this stuff is, you know, okay, you're going to, you're probably going to have to order you know, the Schaefer, you're going to have to order Dominator. You're going to have to order Saber, you know, but, you know, walking into the store, uh, we'll take a look at what I didn't pick up was uh, Red Armor. Um, I didn't get that information. I think we're going to do a couple of pieces on this, but just for stuff, you can see where we're at here. So I've got this partially broke down so we didn't have to take up too much time with this, but I want to take a look and see what kind of film strength I got left in the crankcase to keep my bearings and upper cylinder. You know, I'm gonna talk while I work here. And I've always said that 50 to one makes EPA in my personal opinion. And look, I ain't no scientist. I'm just some old dumb redneck works on chainsaws. But what I can say is I feel like most of the oils don't have the film strength at 50 to one to keep the crankcase, crankcase well lubricated. Um, I'm, you know, 50 to one, I'm gonna say is perfectly fine for upper cylinder lubrication. Um, but I, I don't feel like, and what we could probably do is do a little series of this and run, you know, a tank or two of gas through with each oil. Jeez, uh, who put this on? Oh, this ham-handed guy. That was all right. Um, and actually see, we're taking some of the chemistry out and just say, okay, here's what this oil looks like. Here's the film strength that's left in the crankcase and try and take out as much, I don't know, try and be scientific about it. But enough so that, you know, let's just see what real world effects of using different types of two-stroke oil does. And I, like I said, I haven't, haven't done anything. Ah, then I can go there. All right, let's see what I got. Moderate carbon. Got some in the exhaust port. That doesn't hurt anything. No discoloration in the transfers. Okay, a little bit on top of the crown of the piston. And here's the plug that came out of mine. And I feel like it was tuned well the last time I ran it. I mean, you know, 
did my small engine mechanic look. Here's a plug out of the 261. You know, it's brown, it looks a little dry. You know, this is just in for a little light performance work. But, you know, that's why I'm taking this thing down. He wants a little bit more giddy up. And if you look down there, it's all drained. But look, there's your film strength. Let's look in here. See if I can get that out of the way. Look down there. Here, let me. Dry as a popcorn fart, man. And you've got all this discoloration. All right, there's a, we'll hit this on an occasion. I'm not gonna turn my channel into a, a two-stroke oil thing. But people ought to know, man, you know, Look, the cheapest oil you can buy, let's just talk about little one hit 50 to one bottles. All right, so even with everything being freakishly expensive nowadays, let's just talk in like loose numbers. Let's say you bought a one hit bottle of the cheapest Walmart grade oil you can buy. It's probably gonna be like, I haven't bought it. So I'm just going to guess. And let's just say like two, $2 dollars and 50 cents or something like that. And let's just say, you know, some nice high end brand name oil is going to run you three fifty. So there's a dollar difference in between, or maybe a dollar 50. Let's just put that as a general range out there. Dollar 50 for 2.6 ounces of, of oil from cheapest to most expensive. And, you know, sometimes most expensive isn't always where it's supposed to be. Um, there's good products out there for different reasons and different, you know, you may have brand loyalty to something. But, you know, if your brand loyalty is still and you're always at a steel dealership and you're buying your supplies there, then don't buy the Ultra based on the hype. Buy, you know, switch back to the old school dinosaur oil and either short it, you know, put like, you know, 0.9 gallons in your one gallon mix. Um and mix it a, a little richer. Um, you're not gonna have huge issues following out plugs. You know, we're talking about the difference in between 2.6 ounces and 3.2. Yeah. So a little bit over a half an ounce of oil per gallon. But let's look at what's important. You know, your bottom end of the motor is really the heart of it. You know, you can clean up a cylinder and throw a new piston in and get back to business. You burn your crankshaft up, now you're in a world of hurt. You know, you throw your bearing, you know, the bearings go out because they're not well lubricated. They're dry. Think about that, as dry as that is, spinning at, you know, 9,000 RPM in the cut and free revving to 13 plus thousand RPMs. You better have some film strength in your oil. Okay, enough rant for this. I just, uh, let's uh, get a decent discussion going. I know I don't have a huge channel, but uh, this means something to me. So thanks for sticking around. And uh, again, I'll take all the feedback I can get. And I don't want to hear, well, I use this because it's my personal favorite. I want to see, put your money where your mouth is. I want to see film strength. I want to see oil on the bottom of, <clears throat> of the, uh, look at that. There's a lip of oil right there. That's film strength. That keeps, hey, a little scratch right there. Can't feel it. You can see it. But you can also see, here, look. I do that. Can I wipe my thumb? Absolutely nothing. Look at that. All right. Here's our introduction to talking trash about two stroke oil because everybody's got an opinion, but I don't want it to be just because 
I like this brand because it's in a pretty bottle. I want to see results.